Thanks, Thomas. Thank, and thank you guys so much for being here today. My name is Grant Kastner. I'm Extempore's Community Manager. And as I've mentioned in other webinars and other presentations, I am not just some random guy who does a lot of our marketing stuff, um, but I'm also a language teacher. I am a Chinese teacher here at Mount Westonka High School in Minnesota, Minnesota. Um, and I'm just, I'm really happy to be here with you guys today talking about using Extempore for free rights and reflections. So without further ado, let's get into it. First off, what what are we going to be doing today? What, what is this webinar all about? So a little bit first about my background. Again, I mentioned I'm a language teacher by trade. I got my master's uh, in secondary education and I've been teaching Chinese now for three years. This is my first year in Minnesota. The past two years I taught in Southern Maryland. Um, and I'm just, I'm really passionate about uh, language education. And when I learned about extempore, I'm like, oh my God, I can do all of these things with it. Are you serious? Um, so I've been here since August and I've been you know writing blogs and doing webinars and uh, managing our social media, doing all sorts of fun stuff um, with Extempore. And I'm just, like I said, I'm really happy to be here today. <coughs> so, excuse me. What is this session, what is this presentation gonna, gonna look like? So if you were at the previous, um, my previous webinar talking about read alouds and dictations, it's gonna follow a pretty similar structure. Um, we're gonna talk about free writes and free talks. Um, and I'm just gonna preface this now. Anything that I talk about free writing can be, also be applied to, to free, free talks as well. So. Why should we use free rights? Some background research and talking about my classroom and personal experience. And then finally giving you guys an extempore how-to. How can you do that directly on extempore? Um, and then secondly, talking about reflections and in that same vein, that same pattern, why should we use reflections? Some background research, my personal experience using them. Um, and then again, an extempore how-to uh, to show you how we can craft these directly on extempore. Um, and then at the end, we will definitely have time for a q and I'd be happy to field any questions or comments that you may have. Um, but at the same time, I'm going to be, this is going to be a pretty, I'm going to try to make it pretty engaging. Um, and you guys are invited to, um, you know, ask questions, leave comments during the presentation. And I'll be, I have my chat right open on my other screen. So again, if you have any questions during the presentation, don't hesitate to ask. Um, and I'll be asking you guys quite a few polls uh, as we go. So be ready, be prepared. All right, let's jump into it. Here we go. So free rights and free talks. Here's our first poll. Do you guys ever free write? So, and what I mean by free write is just writing with sort of no goal, no intention in mind, just writing whatever's on your mind to just for the sake of writing. And if you do, do you write in your native language? Do you write in a second language? Or you do both or some mixture of the two? Or you code switch? Um, take take a minute or two. I'm just, I'm curious to hear your guys' background on, on this, on free writing um, and, and, you know, how familiar you are with it. Take a minute in the chat, please, please. I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd love to hear, um, love to see your guys' back on this. I'll say that myself, I do free write a little bit, not too often, um, maybe once a month or so, but it can be, it can be pretty, pretty nice when I do that. I guess I'd take a minute, put a response in the chat. Let's see. French and English, awesome. So cool, Anne. That's great. French and English, French and English. Wow, our French teachers are, are in full force today. German and English, awesome. Oh man, so we have good experience. I, I had no idea what to expect. Everybody in English. I have my student free right for a comp class I teach. You don't, okay, Spanish too actually. Wow, you guys are awesome, bravo, bravo. I, I really didn't know what to expect. That's great response, I, I'm, I'm loving it. You guys are, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so got some good background on that. All right, so. Free rights 101. And again, like I mentioned, this can all be applied to free talks as well. Um, so why in the world? Why should we do this? Why should we use free writing? One of the biggest emphases emph 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 that I will make is that you the, the whole idea, especially for language students, is that forget worrying about the grammar or the spelling or any of those, those little things that might inhibit your writing. The purpose is just to produce content. Write. You know, so when they have that, that open mind of, okay, all I need to do is write something down. I just need to produce the language. Well, that's going to help them reduce anxiety. And eventually, in turn, it will help them build fluency. Um, so it's that. But at the same time, starting free writing, you know, and getting them, getting them into this groove of, you know, doing it more than once, doing it maybe once a week or twice a week, um, that can help alleviate some of the nervousness that might inhibit them uh, in the first place, you know, because like I said, they might be told, what, what do you mean? There's no, there's no requirements. I don't have to use, 
you know, the past tense six times, or I don't have to use this list of vocabulary words, they might be nervous when they have all of this, all of this freedom. Um, so that's something to consider. And then finally, another reason is that we are, again, we are emphasizing spontaneous production of the language and we're getting them to forget always having to worry about grammar and correctness. And when we do that, when we build that, that comfort within them, we are able to get them more comfortable with the language, obviously, um, and get them more willing to produce it at the same time. Um, so these are, are definitely some good reasons as to why we should use free rides in our classes. So now another poll, we're right back at it. Another poll, how often do you use free rides in your classes? Do you use them, you know, once a week, once a month, once a year? I'd be curious to hear. You guys seem like you have a lot of experience with them already. Um, so let me, let me know, how often do you guys use free rides in your classes? Seven per semester. Tara has a very set limit. That's cool. That's cool that you have a, a, a set amount that you do. That's cool. Anybody else? And if you don't, there's no harm to that. Twice per week, Blackboard Discussions fits the way with the content. What we qualify as a free ride. Ooh, Sandrine. Once in a while, not enough. Every month. Okay. I, I love that we have experience with this. This makes me so happy about it. Um, yeah, I use discussion forums too, Valerie. I used to in my, in my previous school. Daily sentence for second year time class. Cool, yeah, that's good. Awesome, thank you guys for, for your input. Now, let's see how we can, again, using free rights in the world language classroom. And a lot of the sources that I'm gonna talk about, like Rames 1983, she's one of them. Um, they deal primarily with English language teaching and using free rights in English English as a second language classroom. Um, but there's no reason why these ideas can't, uh, I'm trying to say, can't be applicable to, to other languages outside of um, English as well. So one of the things that Rames talked about, again, building that comfort. And as your students, they write, as they write more and more, they grow in that sense of comfort. And they say, wow, this, isn't, this actually isn't that bad. Um, and then something we'll talk about is that our job, we don't have to correct these. We're just supposed to look at them and say, hey, you know, I like what you said. Um, and giving general feedback, they're, they're not, if it's for a grade, it's not a free write. That, that is the important thing to remember here. Play. This is one of the ideas that I love the most, this idea of play and experimentation with the language. And when we focus on the content over form, like Tanner says, they are so much easier to just relax and they don't have any worry of penalties or you know fear of making a mistake. And when we get away from that constant fear of making a mistake, we can almost encourage ourselves to use the language and make mistakes and learn from it. Um, and I sort of think of examples like when you learn when you learn a language and even like, what do I think? Like in Chinese, there's a, a the suffix ja is like for someone who someone who does something. So like a um, someone who reads is a duja. Someone who studies is a shuja. If they learn that that's a suffix, but they haven't officially learned it in class, well, what's to prevent them from using that in their free writing on another word? You know, they can hypothesis test. Um, so comfort, play, and then finally making sure we have a good choice. We have you know. A specific choice on our free writing and then that we have a good atmosphere um, as well. And we'll talk about what this what this choice means when it comes to determining um, our free rights and how we how we design them. All right, my teaching experience with free rights. So how do I use how do I use language teachers? How do I use free rights to help my students? Um, one, I love using free rights to have them measure their progress, especially for like level one students when we start at the beginning of the year. I don't know a single character to you know, December or January, wow, I know 150 characters and I can write a 300, 300 character paragraph. That's huge progress. And there's a huge sense of accomplishment that my students get um, purely and that any student would get from being able to see, you know, starting with nothing and then producing so much language on their own. That's, that's really valuable. Um, showing creativity. I mean, when you give a free write and you give a broad topic, you have no idea what your students are going to write about. They might write about their cats. They might write about their dogs, their lizards, some story that they can think of. It's almost as if there aren't enough instances, there aren't enough opportunities in class for students to show their creativity um, with the target language. And this really, free rights really allow them to, to you know, get a chance to show off that creativity and you know, be artistic with the language. Challenge themselves. In the same light, 
using freerwriters to challenge themselves, you know, how much can you write? Can you write 500 words in Spanish? Can you compose a story on your own using the language that we've learned? You know, using freerwriters to get your kids to challenge themselves is, I think, really valuable. And finally, like I mentioned, experimenting and playing with the language, hypothesis testing, and using it in ways that they haven't learned before. Free rights with creativity um, can really just open up students' minds and get them to really, you know, figure out how to use the language in ways that they that they haven't used it before. All righty, so that's a little bit of my experience. Another poll. We're keep going. We're going. We're going. Okay. How can or how do you? You guys seem to be pretty pretty active with these free rights in your classes. How do you use free rights in your language classes? You guys say you use them a lot. But what under what circumstances do you give certain? Um, requirements for them. I'd be curious to hear if you guys can share. Let's hear. Let's read, I should say. So I'll give an example. One thing that I do is at the end of a unit, I'll always have a free ride at the end of the unit just to see, okay, we've learned all of these words and characters. How can we use them on our own now? That's one way that I'll do it. Take your time. No rush. I'm talking a lot. So I think somebody, I think, uh, oh yeah, there was the daily sentence for the second year Thai class. Right? That would that would be, I'm assuming that might be a warm up. Um, let's see, Tara, practice with certain grammar topics and then I have them go back and read them all and see how they have improved. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Their last written free write is a reflection. How appropriate for this webinar today. Um, Mid-levels, I assign an essay on deep topic, grammar is by the account, only originality at heart. I love that. Uh, I love that, Valerie. That's great. Storytelling based on pictures. Sure. I do that too. Yeah. Just give them, I like, so I like to use the wiki how images because they're kind of awkward and funny. And I'll just say, okay, here's like four pictures. Now tell a story with them. Yeah. That absolutely counts as a free write. Thank you guys for your, um, for your input. The same at the end of unit, right? For, yeah, right for five minutes. Sure. Um, awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys for your input. And now let's take a step back and let's see how can we create a feed, create a feedback, create free rights on extempore. So here I am, I'm gonna to go to my class. We can see I have my winter wake webinar up class. Yes, that's that's that was my typo. Uh, I'm gonna create an assessment. So, okay, I can say, all right, my assessment in free right one. Assessment timeline, I'll give them a few weeks. Uh, but again, need to remember here, respond with text. So all parameters. Uh, assessment description. This is a free write. Write as much as you can. Um, and one thing is that I'll actually give them a time limit on how much time they have to respond. And I'll give them, if I do it on extempore, I'll give them 10 minutes um, because I don't want my kids just sitting here for, for 30 minutes trying to, you know, think of something and write what you can in 10 minutes. If, if you're done, if you can only write so much after 10 minutes, that's fine. Right, I'll get a good feel of what your level is based on how much you can write um, in this time. So I have my parameters, I have my assessment all set up, I have its foundation. And now I can finally add a question. So I'll say, okay, free write topic. My free write topic, and I'll say, okay, you know, write as much as you can. But here, and I'm gonna get into this when I talk about tips for using free write, I'm gonna give them a topic. I'm gonna say, um, talk about what you do on the weekend because that at least gives them some type of idea um, for what what they're going to write about as opposed to just being told write as much as you can well about what give them you want to give them some type of focus so i'll hit next i'm all done my assessment is beautiful it's created and it's waiting to be done so i go to my my student account now hit refresh And here I am, I can open my free write and it's gonna tell me when I go to question one, oh, I clicked a little too fast, sorry about that. Um, but it's gonna tell me I have a time limit. And so now I see, okay, I can write as much as I can. As soon as I click into this box and I start typing, you'll see that timer start to go. And I can say, you know, on the weekends, I normally like to go to the park. 
something like that. Also, whatever, right? The free ride has begun, they have their time limit, and this is what they can do. So I'll hit submit. My assignment is done, it's my activities. And now I've submitted my free ride here as a student and as a teacher, I refresh my page and I can grade it. So I go into my grading page, got my free ride, my student's free ride waiting for me. That's me, Grant. And I can see there's my student response right there. So I can give feedback, I can give audio feedback, I can give video feedback if I wanted to. I can say, hey, you did a really great job on this on this free write. I thought the way you used certain grammar patterns or vocabulary was really creative. However, you want to do that. Um, so I'll say, you know, great use of prepositional phrases. <laughs> I don't know. That would mean a lot to me if I was a student. Um, so I can say that. And just like that, I have a completed free write. I have my, I created the prompt. I have the student response, and then I've given the feedback as the instructor. Alrighty, let's jump back into our presentation. So now we have, we've created a few a free writes. Get my words mixed up here. Um, but now I want to talk about some things we should know about, some tips we should have when it comes to designing free writes. First is, will you have a focus? Do you want to give a pure free write or a pure free talk? You can give a pure free write. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I just think you should be aware that when you don't give us a certain, when you don't give a specific topic or a specific uh, focus to the assignment, the range of responses will absolutely vary. Um, so one thing that I like to do is give a topic and also a type of push. And, and here's what I mean by that. So for example, a topic might be, okay, here's your free, right? Talk about anything related to travel preparation, anything. And then my students say to me, oh, Mr. Kastner, there, there's so much stuff I could talk about. Well, I, I, I have all this stuff going on. We just learned so much about travel. Okay, here's a push. Here's an idea. You lost your passport. What do you do, right? That could be a free write, you know, and they could modify that. They don't have to do this. That's the thing with the pushes. They don't have to follow them. It's simply an idea. You lost your passport. They could do, I lost my luggage. I lost my computer at the airport. I got lost at the airport, right? Anything like that. Um, they're just... Pushes. They're, they're extra ideas to take a broad topic, talking about travel, and just narrowing it down some and helping them figure out what they're going to write about. So two more examples. Discuss technology in your life would be a topic, a little push, introduce an American app. Technology, app, narrowing it down. And then finally, writing about art in your home, very broad topic. Narrow it down, talk about your favorite painting that you own. These are all just simple examples of, you know, okay, what's my topic? And if my students don't know what to write about, how could I help them figure out an idea? Because at the same time, you don't want to, like I said, you don't want a certain requirements. You just want it to be very broad and open-ended and student-centered for them to be able to create the content and produce the output, produce the language um, that you've been learning. Again, another thing to worry about, not worry about, but Thing to be aware of when you're designing free right is vocabulary, grammar, and word count. Now, here's what I'll say about this: Do not require them to use specific specific patterns in or you know grammatical um, structures in their writing. You know, don't say use the past tense at least three times. Instead, if you want to measure their ability, their growth with these grammatical patterns or certain vocabulary, well, give them topics that force, not force, but that are best suitable for the use of such patterns. For example, talk about the best class you've ever taken. What was it like? Tell me about what you did two years ago. You know, if you wanna talk about the future tense, say, where are you going to go to college? What do you want to do after you graduate? These situations will, will you know, they, they are, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they're ideal, they're suitable for that type of language, right? Give them a situation that would, you know, it would, where it would be logical to use the past tense, where it would make sense to use the future tense, conditional, you know, giving advice for, for subjunctive, I believe in Spanish and French. Um, you know, create those situations and don't make the focus of the free write using the past tense, using the future tense, using proper reflexive pronouns, right? Don't make that the focus, that, then you're, you're, you're deviating. And finally, limit requirements. One of the only things I'll give my students is, is just a word count or a character count. I'll say, okay, 200 characters. I don't like doing that, but at the same time, if I don't, then kids can get lazy. 
Um, and I just, I wanna make sure that they produce a certain amount. You don't have to do that, but you can if you would like to. And then finally, post free write, right? What is the role of the teacher and what is the role of the instructor of the student after the free write? So for example, one of these quotes that I, I really liked and I have it right here is that when you have, as a teacher, when you're looking at your students' free writes, you, know, you don't have to grade all of them. But if you noticed that 10 students have, you know, misconjugated a, 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 an irregular verb and they all conjugated it in the, in the same incorrect way, well, maybe that's something to point out and have a little sentence correction or some quick little grammar review in your class. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, it's a time where you can see the consistencies and or inconsistencies of your students writing compared to what you're teaching um, and use that as a time for you to reflect and say, oh, did we learn this? Did we did or did my students learn this? And are we applying it in our free rights? If they are, woohoo. If not, learn from it. Um, so that would be that that's free rights in a nutshell. Um, and then moving on, we can talk about reflections. So. Just like what we did with, with beginning on free rights, let's talk, we can talk about reflections. And I'll ask you guys, how often, how often do you have your students reflect on their learning in your classes? Good thing here is I don't really have to define what it means to, to reflect. We all know reflecting. How often do you guys have this? Put it in the chat, take your time. Daily, yeah, every class. Yeah, that's right. Always reflect per class. And I think I think there is a difference between I think between what I'm trying to ask and what I think I'm really wanting. I guess formal reflections versus, you know, you know, we can reflect in class every day. I think everybody does that versus, you know, actually writing down or actually producing something. Um, and I'm sure that that varies per person, but Awesome, thank you guys for your responses. All right, let's check it out. So reflection, one-on-one. -on -one. We know why we need reflection, but let's, let's just be reminded. Why should we reflect in our language classes? Awareness. And because when we, when we engage in this type of reflection, we are able to step back, not just ourselves, but our students, and look at how we are learning things. Do we know what we know? Do we know what we don't know? Um, Dante's, Dante's Whitney had a really interesting article on this and talked all about, you know, constructivist learning environments and what reflection does for us and why it's so critical um, to our learning, not just the content, but, you know, learn, growing as an individual. Um, and then secondly, autonomy. For learners with limited opportunity, when we don't have this, right, when, we, when we're not able to, to talk to people who speak the language we are learning, when we have reflection, it is almost on the same page. It's, almost, it's on the same level as teaching with comprehensible input, making sure our students get, get ability to practice, um, get opportunities to practice with the language. It is so important. It is critical that, that we have critical reflection in our language classes. And I know um, that you guys all know this. So another poll, how, that how do you use reflection in your own language learning? So, Take a step back from your classes. And now I wanna ask you guys, I'm going to assume that everybody in here, including myself, speaks a second, speaks at least two languages. So I'm gonna ask you, how do you reflect on your own language learning or in the past, um, whether you were learning English or you were learning, um, you're learning French, whatever, you know, if you're learning English or the language that you teach or another language on your own, how do you reflect? Sandrine says in a diary, awesome, I love that. That's really cool. And it doesn't have to be something written. It can be, you know, something that just goes on. In a diary. Filling in course evals. Yeah, that's great. And reflection is not little notes. <laughs> that's good, Anne. Discussions for our habits. Course evals. Yeah. And, and reflection is not oh it doesn't have to be an individual activity either. It's definitely something we can do with, with other people. Um, so, you know, it's not limited to that. So, oh, right. Thank you guys for sharing. Always good to get, get um, some, get reflect on what we know and what, what our audience knows already. All right, reflections place in the world language classroom. What's going on? 
why should we do this and how should we do this? Record it. You know, Lemmy et al, 1999. 1999, technology was not what it is today back then. Um, she suggested when we have this opportunity, we have all of these mediums, especially, I mean, the article referenced it as the World Wide Web. Um, we have the internet, we have the cloud at our disposal. We should use it, online conversations. You know, whether you're putting it in a discussion form, you're putting it on Padlet, you're, you're having them record it on extempore, right? This, we need to be using online sources so that we can compare our reflections. I believe somebody in the, in the, um, in the chat mentioned comparing free rights, right? Across, this, across um, you know, periods of time. When we have our reflections, we can compare them as well. That's, you know, reflecting on our reflections. Meta, but super valuable. I mentioned earlier, knowing what we know and knowing what we don't know. When we help our students reflect and when we encourage them to reflect, we, they are building you know, their own personal learning process and they're getting to know, it's, it's metacognition, what they need to, to learn how to do better. Um, yeah. So my teaching experience with reflections, how do I use them in my class? Well, I use them to help my kids reflect. Think back, look at what you knew back then. Look at what you know now. Look at what's still confusing you, right? Simple reflection, that's important. Um, I mentioned earlier, again, developing metacognitive skills. Do we know what we know? Do we know what we don't know? Do we know what's easy to do with Chinese? Do we know what's difficult to do with Chinese? Do we know what causes us problems? These type of thoughts, being able to think about our own thought process, those are important skills to have. Um, measuring linguistic and cultural learning. We're all language teachers, but we all teach the culture as well. And our students' linguistic progress is usually can be very, how do I put this? It can be quantified, right? We can see, oh, you wrote at the beginning of the, of the in September, you wrote a 50, 50 word free write, way to go. In March, you were able to write a 400 character free write. That's considerable progress. But cultural learning, talking about our cultural knowledge and what we've learned from the culture is it could be debated, it could be argued that it's even more important than our linguistic um, progress. Because you know that cultural learning you can take out and see all around the world and it's so valuable. And so when we can measure our cultural learning, whether it's values, you know, the, the products and perspectives that we've seen from the culture that we are learning about and we can measure what we knew before, what we didn't know compared to what we've learned about now, also a useful way to use reflections. Um, and finally, for me, Reflection as an individual, forget being in the classroom, being a teacher, being a student. It is just such an important habit to have as a learner, as a person, right? And so I get my kids to reflect, obviously for their, you know, to see what we've learned, to see how we've grown, but just to build the habits and build, you know, the, these important thought processes so that when they leave my classroom, sadly, but when they leave, they have this habit in them of, oh, I can reflect on this. I can reflect on anything that's happened in my life, whether it's at school, at a job, with my friends, in my family. Having a reflective mindset is, is just critical. It's, it's a very important trait um, to have. So this is some of the ways that I use them with my students. Another poll, hope you're ready. Um, what are some specific topics you guys have your students reflect on in your classes? So whether that's cultural, is it is it linguistic, is it grammar patterns, is it nouns, is it idioms? What do you guys usually choose? I'm curious to hear. Stereotypes and biases, yeah, great. Transitions, different stages of life, awesome. Vocabulary development, sure, yeah, these are all relevant answers. Person goals, sure. Yeah, I think the, the, oh, KWL. Yeah, absolutely. Stereotypes and biases, right? All of those cultural things, you know, what we, what we presume about a culture, what we hear about a culture from, you know, the media that we see versus what we learn it's actually like. Um, it's just so important. Vocabulary, grammar, culture, progress. Yeah. Awesome. Accent, accent, excuse me. Accent mark usage. Sure. Yeah, you can reflect on that. Learning about where a word is stressed or how accents change different, the sound of a word. Very important. Okay, thank you guys. Let's create some reflections on extemporary, shall we? We learned how to create a free, right? Let's create a reflection. All right, I'm gonna jump back in here. Now I'm gonna create an assessment. Call it reflection and I'll pick a topic that you guys did. Reflection one. Here, 
I'm gonna give well, I'll give them plenty of time to do it, of course. Um, I like to have my students respond with video because it allows it allows me to really you know see how they're how my students can express their emotions. They can really show how they're feeling about a certain topic with a video versus audio or versus text. And then this is something that I'll, I gave tips about free rights. This is a tip that I'll give in terms of making reflections. Do you want them to use video? Do you want them to use text? Do you want them to, to use both? That can, that's an option, right? I, I prefer that my students use video, but sometimes they might write better. So sure, maybe I'll give a text option as well. Um, so I choose video. And then time to respond. I don't usually limit these, but I do say no re-recording because I want it to be one take, right? And if I have a specific topic, that I you know, want them to really reflect on. I don't want them to see the topic, back out, write a response, and then come back and just read their response directly um, on a template. That doesn't, that doesn't allow them to show their emotion. Um, so I usually choose no read All right, next, I can make, make my question. Reflection Q1. Question text, what do we talk about? Uh, accent mark usage. I, I just like that. I think that one's really creative. Um, Let's reflect. How have you, or so I could say, how do you feel about using accents in the TL? Because all sorts of all sorts of accents use languages. All sorts of languages use accents. Um, so that might just might be a standard question uh, that I would ask them. And I might, you know, for the sake of time, I'm not going to write more. But you can add as much as you want here. I could upload my own video or my own, what am I doing here? I could upload, cancel. I could upload a video of myself and if I wanted to, I could explain more of what I'm looking for. I could say, hey, you know, we, we've talked a lot about using accents on certain words and how it changes them or in Chinese, you know, tones are indicated by accents. How, do you, how comfortable do you feel reading those? Anything like that um, could be used for a reflection. It's, there's no limit to what you can do here. So I have my I have my text. Kids are ready to go. My prompt is ready to go. Now it's ready. Come back to my student side. I reflect. I have an active assessment waiting for me. At least I should. There we go. Jump in. You'll see. I had that no, no re-record on, so it says, okay, are, are you sure? Yes, I am sure, jump in. And there we go. How do I feel about using accents on the target language? Oh man, how do I feel? Uh, I think I feel pretty comfortable using accents. Yay. All done, there's my response. Um, submit, and I've completed my reflection. Just like with the free rights, I can come back to my class and I can you don't need to grade it. I can view it. I don't want to say grade or reflection, but I can view the reflection um, and leave any feedback uh, that I would like to. Interesting thoughts, Grant. There's my feedback. I leave my feedback. And my reflection is done. I viewed it. I can see my students' thoughts. Um, yeah. All right. So just like with free rights, I gave you guys some tips on, on making free rights. Now I'm going to give some tips on using reflections with extempore and some things that we should be aware of when it comes to making them. One, choose a theme. I, I think choosing a theme uh, is really important. And again, just like with free rights, you don't want it to be super, super, super open-ended. Um, pick something for them to reflect on in specific. And that could be linguistic progress. It could be accent. It could be conjugating verbs. It could be you know learning how to write characters. It could be anything linguistic. And at the same time, it could also be cultural phenomenon. We've learned about, in my class, we've been talking about what people do on the weekends in China and Taiwan. We could talk about you know, marriage markets, night markets, uh, going to KTV and doing karaoke. What do you think about those things? What values does it show about their culture? These are relevant, relevant themes for, for reflection. Um, again, or not again, but next point, target language versus native language. And there was a quote from Natris that I really liked, which talked about, you, know, you might think, why would I have my student do a reflection in the target language? I know I wouldn't because my students simply don't have that level and to ask them to produce, you know, a reflection of native language level in the target language with where they are right now isn't practical for my students. But when you think about it, if your students have the ability and they're at that level, 
I like this quote. He said, you know, it's made even more valuable by the fact that the words that the student is asked to write are about his or her personal experiences. And so that these words may have more personal meaning to the student. What do you think about that? You're writing in Spanish, you're writing in French, you're writing in German, you're writing in Thai. You're producing your language that you've learned about your experiences. I mean, that's, that's really valuable. Um, so at the end of the day, this is really up to you, whether you want your students to reflect on the target language or the native language, whether it's spoken um, or written. But there are benefits to, to, both, to both sides. Frequency, how often? And so what I mean frequent, by frequency, what I mean is we're going to reflect in our classes every day on what we learn. What I mean here is a formal reflection. Right? Are you, how many times are you sitting down and writing about what you're learning? And to me, I think spacing them out a little bit is, is more productive because then you get your students to really see the progress, right? Say from, from March to June, right? You know, how have we learned, what have we learned culturally from March to June? Um, because if you have, if you reflect, if you assign formal reflections every day, I just, I don't think you're going to get the same type of response and quality as you would from say, you know, once every two weeks or once every two months. So that's something to consider. And then finally, I have mentioned spoken versus written. Entirely up to you. There are benefits to both. Um, and you might even want to give student choice and say, okay, here I have a spoken one that you can do, or you can do a written one, your choice. Um, so that's, that is an option as well. And finally, yes, this is not limited. Reflections are not limited to the content that you teach in class. It's not limited to the language you learn. It's not limited to the culture that you talk about. Get them to reflect on the nature of your class as well. You know, I noticed I learned really well with, you know, so-and-so, or I noticed I don't think her and I or him and I should ever be partners again because you know, I don't think I work too well with him. Get that honest feedback from your students. Or I really like the way you do this in class, Mr. Kassner. Or I don't really like the way you do this in class, Mr. Kassner. Do you think we could change that? That, that, that feedback is super valuable. Um, so don't limit it. You know, and, that, and that goes along with the theme. You could change that. So a recap. Breaking it down today, we talked about free rights and reflections and why we should do them, how we can create them on extempore um, and just in their value that they have in language classes. You can use extempore for both, as I demonstrated to you, it's a super valuable tool. Um, and it's really perfect for, for both of these things, especially with the timers and doing free rights or doing free talk and say, you know, hey, talk for three minutes as much as you can. Um, extempore is perfect for that. I wrote blogs recently on both of these topics. They're fairly long. If you go to our website, you can check them out and they'll be there and you can read them and email me and tell me how much you enjoy them, hopefully. Um, obviously, also check out our previous webinars if you haven't already. There's a link, this will be in the video um, that'll be shared later. And then finally, we can now have the Q&A and I thank you guys so much. I can take any questions or comments that you have. It's been really wonderful talking to you guys today. Um, if you need to, here are some works that I, I consulted for this. And again, thank you. You can reach me at grant.castner at extempore.com, extempore or hit us up on Twitter at extempore app. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Any questions, comments, please, please talk to me. I love these things. I love free rights and, and reflections. Um, yes, we purposely wanted to leave the end for discussion. So yeah, stick yeah, around yeah. if you want. Otherwise, if you do need a dip, no worries. Please fill out the survey. It'll help us immensely with future content so we already got a question both yeah. in the q a and oh chat looks so like tara asked a question and valerie asked a question tara has a longer question i'm going to answer that second um valerie asked about any experience with students using google translate for free rights when you have ex i mean here's the thing for me it's a little easier because if my student uses google translate there's a good chance they're going to come up with a character that they don't know for chinese right and i can say to them have we ever learned that character no well good chance you probably looked it up without my permission. And so one of the things that I'll do is like for free rights or for other types of assignments, I'll tell them, hey, this is a written assignment. You get three words that you, that you can look up and you get to ask me for permission, right? I'll say, okay, you can write about whatever you want. Three words. If you're going to look something up, you get three words. Ask me and I'll tell you how to say them, but that's it. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I would say in terms of Google Translate, I just had a reflection on online translate. Yeah, reflections on online, online translator. That's perfect. Um, the use of translators, I think, is a whole other topic. There's a really, um, it's, it's a really, it's debatable, right? Because translators can be very valuable tools if we know how to use them. 
They can also be very dangerous tools if we don't know how to use them and they get abused. So there's a really fine line, um, I think, with translators, and that's it's a much longer, longer discussion. But yeah, so the idea, my, that was sort of my idea to say, hey, three words or four words, but you have to ask me if you want to use them. Anything else that we haven't learned, and you know, I'm gonna deduct points. But that's normally not for pre rates. Pre rates are supposed to be you know on your own. Um, and one last thing, Valerie, that I'll include is that in my directions for my free rights, because I'm usually very specific, and then Tara, I'll get to your question, um, is that I will put only use the language we've learned. Only put the language we've learned. Because that way, I don't want them to try and go off and do something else. Use what we've learned. Show me what you can do What with what we've learned. <sighs> um, Tara asks, okay, I'm going to answer, answer live, see what happens. Uh, what type of feedback or response do you all leave on free rights context? I teach an asynchronous online class and have students do free rights. In order to interact with students through knowledge what they've written, I want to do more than just assign it and complete, complete, sure. I never know what to type to what type to what type of feedback to leave. I feel as though I should not point out mistakes. It's a point of the phrase to not worry about making mistakes. However, I don't want to get too personal. Yeah, this is a this is a an excellent question. And I think um, I don't think it's an easy answer, Tara. I think for me. I would say, I would try to leave, I, I tend to have my feedback lean on the side of not grammar-based. You know, if it was a personal free write, I might comment on something that, that they talked about if it's personal, right? And I say, you know, and they say, you know, on the weekends, I like to go to the swimming pool because I love swimming, right? And they say that in the target language, I might comment and say, oh, hey, that's really cool. Do you like doing that? You know, make it, make them feel proud of what they produce. Right. If you notice a, a mistake that they're that they're producing consistently in the you know in the in the free writer, like they're misconjugating a verb, I would just make it you know put it out lightly, but don't make it the primary focus of your feedback. Does that make sense, Tara? Um, and I know you probably have a lot to do, so it's hard to you know manage your time with say twenty free writes um, and having to leave unique feedback. But that would be I think that would be some of the some of the feedback. I would give to you in a response to this question. Yeah, make make them proud of what they produce. Don't don't you know? You can correct their grammar on other things. The free write is for you know seeing what can I do with the language. It's not about the teacher. It's about you. Personalize it. Um, and ask. Did you ever ask them the same free write topic on a later assessment? Yeah, I think so. You could do you know pre and post assessments with free writes. Where at the beginning, especially, and this is especially more relevant, I think, for advanced learners, because for me, my students have a very, very small vocabulary. So asking them to produce something, produce something about a certain topic, would be pretty difficult if they don't even have the vocabulary to do it. Um, but if you have like a level three or a level four um, class, and you're going to talk about, I don't know, medicine, then you could say at the beginning of the unit, you say, okay, write as much as you can about medicine, and then. When you're done with the medicine, health, whatever unit it is, have them do the same free write. But now that they've added on, you know, X amount of vocabulary or X amount of new grammar structures, compare the two. That I think that would be my suggestion and um, for you know using a pre uh, a free write as a as a as a pre test and a post test, but not a test. Pre write and a post write, pre unit, post unit, whatever you want to call it. Other questions, comments, please. Keep them coming. I'll be here all night. <laughs> thank you, Valerie. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And again, I'll just mention, um, check out the previous webinars by Sandrine. Um, and I wrote blog posts on all of these things because I'm a big nerd and I, I love talking about them. So check them out if you get a chance. And you can, you know, you don't, don't feel pressured to stay. We'll, we'll be on for a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions or comments, like I said, just let them know. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Anne. Take care, stay safe. Thanks, Benet.
Au revoir, au revoir, au revoir. Okay, if that's it, then I think Thomas, I think we can we can close it down. Um, All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. And for the last five of you, uh, or I guess three, because it's yeah. two of us, uh, please fill out the survey. Appreciate it. Lorene, hello. Nice to see your name. Nice to see you again. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks, Lorene. Appreciate it. The sole IT, the sole tech person. All right. See you guys. See you guys. Take care.